Okay, so the first step towards solving this cube is we're going to make a white cross. And we're going to do that by first putting all of the white edges on the yellow side. So we're going to move this one down, and then we're going to move this one down there, and then we're going to move this final one down there. And now we have what's called the daisy, okay? So now we're going to match up these orange pieces and put them on the white side. So there we go, green, and then we can do red and blue. The next step is to insert the corners. So we use what's called the sexy move, which goes R, U, R prime, U prime. And then we insert each of the corners using that algorithm. And then sometimes you're going to have to do it multiple times. Then we move on to the second layer where you need to insert these edges. So this one is blue orange and needs to go to the right. So we do that algorithm. Then we have this blue red one. So we need to put that on that side as well. Green orange can go there. And occasionally we have a problem where the edge is in the right slot but flipped. So we need to take it out using the same algorithm and put it back in again as so. Then we move on to the last layer where we need to get a cross on the top. And we do that by doing that algorithm once or in this case twice, sometimes three times. Then we need to get all of this side yellow and we do this by using an algorithm called a soon. You may have to do it a few times in a few different places, but eventually you'll get all the yellow sides solved. Then we need to check to see if there are two correct corners in the correct place as here, we've got these two red corners and then we hold them at the back and do an algorithm to swap the two corners. And then we need to do another algorithm to cycle the edges um, and we can cycle it with this algorithm which we may have to do multiple times and sometimes in different places. And there we go, the cube is solved after about two minutes, which is way too long. Okay, so I'm going to solve the cross directly onto the top. This saves time, but it's also slightly more confusing. So we're going to move this cross edge here, insert this cross edge, and then put that on the top there. And finally, we're gonna get this cross edge in. Now, instead of solving the first layer and then the second layer, we're going to do what's called F2L. And F2L is a method where we solve the first two layers at the same time. So we're going to first just insert this normally because the um, cross, uh, the first layer corner is already in place. So we're going to insert this. Now we've got what's called a free pair, which is very easy to insert like that. Then we are going to insert this red blue edge with this red blue white corner and we do an F2L algorithm to pair it up and then insert it in. And then we can do the same thing at the back with this white green uh, orange corner and this white green edge. Then we move on to what's called OLL. And we're gonna do this OLL in two looks. So we're going to first solve the cross and then we're going to do one algorithm which is going to fix all of these corners. There are seven algorithms you could choose from, depending which case. Then we are going to do one algorithm which is going to flip the, well, solve all the corners. And then we are going to do one algorithm out of five different four different options. Yes, four different options which will solve it from there. And now the cube is solved, but that's still rather slow. Okay, so we're going to solve the yellow cross on the bottom and we're going to try and preserve this pair here. So this is pretty much top of the range for CFOP. Then we're going to insert this edge, which has been preserved to an extent. Then we're going to insert this edge and corner, and then we're going to pair that up and insert it into the back. Then we can rotate to solve this like so. 
And then we do what's called OLL, which is one algorithm, which is going to get all of this face one color. There are 57 algorithms to choose from. And then we're gonna do what's called PLL, which is going to finish it off in one look. There are 21 possible algorithms to choose from. Now, before we move on to level four, which is literally more advanced than what I would do and is literally what an eight-year-old kid did who happens to now hold the world record. I didn't choose the world record scramble because I didn't want it to be luck-based. It's quite, it's a pretty standard solve for him and pretty impressive. It's a 4.66 second solve that he got and I'll soon go over that. But you may be wondering, Daniel, where do you get these cubes from? And is that the Super Waylong V2 that was used by Yi Heng Wang in his 4.03 second world record average? Yes, it is. And you can get loads of different cubes at speedcubing.org. And they ship directly from Peterborough in the UK. And they can often arrive to a UK address within a day, quite frequently, if you choose fast shipping. And they do ship all around the world. So if you want to get a cube, you can buy it directly from me at speedcubing.org. But let's get back to how Zhuang Yi Geng did that scramble in 4.66 seconds. Level 4, the ultra-advanced, world-class speedcubing way. So it's hard to know exactly how far Zhuang Yi Geng would have seen into this solve. However, it's pretty clear he would have seen this. This pairs up this block here, which can be formed as part of an X cross. And he also planned out how to insert this edge into the back so he could solve that X cross directly onto the bottom. So he does this and then inserts that edge here. And it's pretty obvious he's already planned way ahead because he goes straight into doing D prime U and then inserts this corner, which is currently in the back, into that slot here to pair up a double X cross. He then rotates the cube and does solves this pair into the back like that. But he goes straight in with an R move there. He then does a U move and does something called a ZBLS. And a ZBLS is essentially an algorithm that will force the cross to be solved so he can go straight into a ZBLL case. So there he finishes F2L and forces a cross on the top. I wouldn't be surprised if he knew what ZBLL cases he was going to get. Actually, he probably wouldn't have done in this case, but sometimes he would do. And then he recognizes what ZBLL he has out of 473 possible cases, something around there. And he does the one correct algorithm. And the cube is solved in 4.66 seconds.